Here I want to look at perspective cropping in Photoshop CS6. And for those of you who are familiar with earlier versions of Photoshop, you'll know that there was always a perspective crop mode that was available uh, with the crop tool. And now in CS6, if we come over here to the tools panel, you can see that we still have the crop tool and beneath it, there is now a perspective crop tool. So the perspective cropping element has now been separated out into a separate tool. So let me select this and I can show you two ways that you can go about initiating a perspective crop. The objective of which being with a photograph like this, for example, is to try and straighten the lines in the image. And to do this, one way would be just to make a series of clicks. So I can click up here, down the top right, come down to the bottom, and then finish off with a fourth click down here. And this would be a way of defining the distortion that's currently in this photograph with the aim of getting the perspective crop tool to correct for this. So that's one way of applying a crop. If I press the escape key now, let me show you that you can also just simply click and drag to define the crop in the image. So in this instance, it's applied a standard type of crop where all I have to do now is to click on one of the corner handles and then just move to reposition it. And you'll notice also that as I do this, that a heads up display appears. And this is something that you'll see not just with the perspective crop tool, but also with a standard crop tool and also the marquees and some other tools as well, such as when working with a transform. And depending on whether you have, how you have the uh, preferences configured in Photoshop, then you'll see these appearing as you make these kinds of adjustments. Another thing that's worth pointing out here is that if I was to hold down the shift key, as I drag one of these corner handles, you can actually constrain the movement so that in this case, it's just a horizontal movement only that can be applied. Then having uh, made that adjustment, um, I can then edit the handles. So for example, if I was to drag on the side handles now, I can enlarge out the crop area just so that I can move this out towards the very edges of the frame. And I can perhaps move this one down here at the bottom a little bit more. So what I've done now is to try and expand out the area of the image that's going to be cropped. It was useful for me to crop that smaller inside area inside those beams there because that allowed me to identify the corner points where I needed to apply the crop. Now I'm trying to maximize the crop to include as much of the image as possible. And then all I have to do now <coughs> is either to click on the enter key up here at the top or I'll just press enter on the keyboard. And then if I just magnify out there a little bit, there is the finished crop. The only thing I would mention at this point is that although the crop has worked pretty well here in this instance, uh, sometimes you will find that the perspective crop doesn't always work as successfully as this. You might end up with a little bit of distortion. And one of the things I would suggest doing then, if that's the case, would be to double click on the background layer in this instance to convert it into a standard layer and then use a transform to <coughs> squash the image or stretch it as, as appropriate. So that finishes this tutorial. There's also another one on the website where I explain some of the new differences that have taken place with the standard crop tool. Thank you.